So let's glue the camera together. This table is quite nice, so I'm going to protect it a little bit with just a piece of cardboard. You could also use our packaging. That would work too. What do we need? Wood glue. There's different types of wood glue. Um, this is just your regular white wood glue that you can buy anywhere. There's also PU glue. Um, different countries, it's called differently polyutherine glue. It's a uh, assume a bit more for chemical ingredients i'm not a chemist so i don't know but the difference is basically the pu glue the polyutherine glue it expands a little bit versus in the regular wood glue tends to contract a tiny bit because it's water-based if i'm correct and the water evaporates so it contracts and the pu glue expo ex ex expands that's similar to maybe you know the kind of foam the pu foam that you use for constructing similar thing it expands so I'm going to use regular wood glue now, but the PU glue, the polyutherine glue, is quite handy because the expansion helps to fill the cracks. Because we want the camera to be really, really light, tight, light proof, so no light comes in. So if you use wood glue, you really have to make sure you stick it together well. Yeah? So we'll do that later on with tape, we'll really tie it up. Um, but anyway, both glues work absolutely fine, no matter which one you choose. So let's start with something very simple. Start with the simple lid. Again, we make sure that the markings that we have here, these little holes for the screws, um, for the hinges and the closing mechanisms are on the outside of the box. That's the only thing we really have to look out for here. Okay, so what I do when I glue something, I take a little piece of cardboard or a strip of paper or a strip of wood with which I spread the glue later on because we don't need it very thick we need it quite thin and where will we place glue yeah on the inside parts here not here because that's on the outside you see so we'll think we have it closed where are the woods touching that's where we put the glue which means here 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 uh, here here and we can put them on the sides as well okay so I'll do that first and let's go okay let me just put it together what I usually keep handy is a tiny bit of a moist cloth yeah to wipe off the remaining wood glue yeah if there's some some that really comes out a lot you can also use your finger and smear off your fingers sure if you want to do that quick and dirty just make sure you don't mess up the wood stain and then let's do the same on the inside let's have a quick look here you can also use another cardboard to Go on the inside and sort of just make sure you don't have excess glue because that's not what we want. Okay, that's very little. That's fine. And now important is I use some tape and I really make sure it's well attached to the box, really tight so that that bond is really strongly there. Step one, let's do that with all of the parts. Okay, so that's the first part that's put together really tightly, yeah? So it really has a good bond and it glues very, very well. You can put it to the side and we start with the box. 
don't keep the tape for too long um, on it. Like if you did that and you wait for like a couple of days, it might take off a bit of the stain, yeah, because these start to bond too much, these tapes with the actual wood. So that's not a good idea. Um, that should be dry within, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour. Um, as you see now here, there's still a little bit of a, of a movement. That might be because wood moves, yeah? So it might have moved a bit. Better to tie it up even more. Yeah. And also, if you got the camera delivered and you live in a humid climate, for example, the camera might have, not the camera, but the pieces might have moved a little bit or might be a bit bendy or something like that. That's because of the humidity. So it's really important to just, you know, make sure everything is really tightly put together and it works. And you have removed all the excess glue inside. So we don't have any glue spills later on. Ah, even here. Don't want this to... Yep. Perfect, that's it. First part done. Next, let's glue together the box. For that, I'm going to take out the focusing system again. If you wondered what I had here before in the video, that's just a moist cloth where I wipe off my fingers or wipe off the excess uh, of glue. Yeah, that's really handy to have. Okay, first thing, we'll put that down, double check that this part, the cutout part here, is really on the bottom, okay? Put it down, and we do the same thing, we glue that here. Sometimes it can happen that a tiny bit of wood from these pieces here chips off. We have supplied a bottle of stain, if you chose our stained version. Um, so you can restain that a little bit. That's also important for the dowels later on because of course they are light color so we can stain them. So this this is not really a problem. Okay, so we do the same thing here. Just again, make sure that the pieces with the markings for the screws are on the outside, not on the inside, okay? So. Check again that the markings are on the outside, yeah? So here we have three and three for the hinges. An advantage with the pre-stained camera compared to the natural one is that this camera is a lot less fragile because the lightwood camera, when you glue, you have to be really, really clean. Otherwise, you might see those glue marks or you have to sand them away later on. So that's definitely the advantage or one of the advantages of buying our pre-stained camera. Okay, so that's the main box and now we'll put in these front and side parts. Just have to clean up the inside. Again, this slightly moist cloth comes in very, very handy. So these two pieces, we'll just glue them in here. It's quite simple. Okay. Now let's do these side parts. And this is where we now will use for the first time our dowels. So they come in different sizes in your packages, um, depending on where you will use them. And some of them you will need to saw off a little bit. So that means if we use this dowel here, and um, I'm gonna place it on the mark. Yeah. 
Oh, that's the wrong hole. Place it here in that circle. Yeah. If I push it in all the way, I have two choices. One is it will stick out here yeah, or it will stick out on the inside. Yeah, so you'll see that here. So either it sticks out on the inside or it sticks out on the outside. Yeah, three choices. Either you glue them in like this, you cut them here, you cut the dowel here, glue it in like that, cut the dowel here, or you mark the dowel and pre cut it. Now, if you mark it on the outside, you pre cut it here, that works well. The only difficulty is the challenge is to saw it off nicely. Yeah? Now there are different types of saws you can use for that. This is sort of a very common saw that people might have at home. Yeah? What I use is a very thin, it's like a Japanese style saw, yeah? that you can saw like this. You can also bend the saw slightly. Yeah, to really make sure you're not sawing into this material, but only on the dowel. Um, you can also just use the blade of a saw. These are not expensive. You can get them in home stores or even on Amazon for like 25, 30 euro dollars. So that's not an issue. If you're not sure about, you know, sawing it off here on the outside, what you can do is you can bend it to really keep the pressure only, only here. And then you saw it off like that. Yeah, but you can see, for example, here I'm already made a tiny mark. So it has to be a little bit, you have to take your time with that. We can just make it until here, yeah, glue it like that and saw it on the inside because on the inside it's not so fragile. You don't really see if there's a tiny bit of, a, you know, a mark left or right. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to glue it like that. And as you can see, the wood of the dowel is a different color to the wood of the pre-stained wood. Now this is not a problem if you have the natural version, but if you have the dark version, we will supply you with a little bit of wood stain that you can later on with a cotton pad or a brush apply here. Unless you like the look, because it got its own look too, you can do that. You can of course also paint it any other color if you wanna go funky. All right, so I'm going to need now, how many dowels do we need? One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna glue Put glue here around. You can see here there's another one that's coming out. So you put glue on these edges and glue here. So this goes together. And then I'll put it on the inside, glue here and a little bit of glue on the dowels. And, uh, and then we saw them off on the inside afterwards when they're dry. Let's do that. Okay, so with the dowels, I'll just have two in there for now, I'll use them afterwards. We can just put a little bit of glue inside the hole. Now you can take out those dowels that we just had for security there. Put the glue in. Okay, wipe off any excess glue that came out with the dowels maybe. Make sure it's really flush. Yeah. You can also use something to make sure it's flush. Okay, that looks good to me. Checking that there's no excess glue anywhere. And now we also use tape to tape it down. Make sure that's sticking really well and attaches well. Okay, let's put in first this part, which is in the back here. And we do that as well with dowels. So Depending which model you have, there might be 
two holes or four holes or three holes but you put the dowels here yeah and you just glue this here on the inside with the dowels just like that work on the table not in the air i'm just doing this to show you you're getting a bit unstable The door we keep for later on, so no worries about the door for now. And that is basically the box. Yeah, that's the first part of the gluing. These two elements are done. Okay, let's continue with the focusing system. So we put that together before. Yeah, let's take it apart again. Yeah, we start with these four elements. Sometimes the dowels are not so easy to take out again. If you can't get the dowel out, plier and just... So, let's put together these four elements. Now, here it is important that they are put together in the right order. They are all four different. So... First, let's start with this part, okay? We identify here that hole, okay? And we take this piece that also has a hole and fits on top of that, okay? Now, important is we have to think where's the front and where's the back of the camera? So, this piece has to point towards the left back. Yeah, so this goes on top here. So I had it just for a second the wrong way around. That goes that direction. Then we're finding that frame on top. And that one is then, doesn't matter in which way, on top. Okay, so again, we have here this hole that corresponds with this hole. It goes on top like that. Okay. And with this, that then corresponds here. And these go together okay that is really important that this hole is on that side because if you take the box this will go later on in here and you see that hole is on this side so that hole has to correspond with that side because we're sliding it here okay when you put that together that is really really important okay let's put the box back So, let's go step by step. First put some glue here. Yeah. Important is the little holes can have some glue because the dowels will go through. But here on the big holes, like I have right now, there shouldn't be any glue because that's where the metal rods will go through later on. So you better take it out in case you have some excess glue there. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So I might squeeze actually a dowel through here in a second. All right, I place that down and I put that first piece on top. Okay. So. There are those very long dowels. Yeah, they are for these center holes here. The long dowels for these center holes. Okay. Let's put some glue in here. And we're gonna put the first one through. Just 
doesn't go through. Take a small hammer, do it on the table. Okay, now you have a reference on how to put on the other ones. Okay, so next piece, yeah, that one here goes on top. Okay, just remember that's the order. Yeah. Here's the hole, here's the hole. These two pieces have no extra hole. You can see here I have a smaller dowel. We have two long ones for you guys. So um, that was a, an oversight here. Okay. Put that one in. You have the dowels as guide. So that is the frame. Again, double check that this hole is in the right position the way it is here right now. Okay, good. So we let that dry and we take the inside part. Let's glue together the inset of the focus plate. So we have these three parts, the back, the plexi and the front part. Check that out. Okay, let's take this part first. I'll put glue here and then I'll put the plexi on top and then the other part. The glue does not go, have a look here. The glue does not go on top here. That would not look very nice. All right, we just glue, glue on these sides. Again, the small holes here, they are for screws later on, so they should keep a little bit cleaner. And the other holes can be full of glue because they will be for the dowels. Okay, so important is that those holes here, yeah, they're later on where we place this piece. So these holes, we'll put magnets in there. Yeah, so make sure it's not that way. That wouldn't be good because we need to access these holes. So it has to be like that. Okay, and important, the sanded side has to go this way, not that way. Okay, because that's where we focus later on. Okay, so I'll just place it on top roughly and could put the dowels in now or afterwards. I'll do it afterwards. And um, then it goes on top. So glue comes here. Place it down, take some dowels. I'll put a bit of glue in the large holes, not the small ones, as we said before.
and we'll tape it up as well. Good, that's on the side. Just cleaning my surface a bit. So now we have these little pieces here. Yeah, and so that's the frame that goes in here. Yeah, and these are the adapters for the different paper sizes. Let's glue in these first. Yeah, we'll put the dowels in like that, and we cut them off here afterwards to make them flush here. Next one, same thing. Okay, and let's tape them up as well. Now we're coming to the next part where we have to glue in some magnets. The magnets are in the package for the focusing system, so you'll find them in there. So it's four magnets, four tiny magnets. Yeah? They fit exactly into these holes and into these holes. So two go here into the plexiglass, acrylic, and two go here. Okay. Now with magnets, it's like that. There's a negative and a positive pole. So if you take them apart, you'll see that here they attract each other, so they go together. But if I turn it around, yeah, it will not attract, it will push away. So one side attracts this one, I will feel a resistance. So you try that with your magnet, you'll see one side pulls together, the other side resists. So when we glue that down, we have to make sure that we don't put the sides that resist to each other, but the sides that connect. Okay, so let's say we start with this. Basically, this will go in here. Yeah, you can do that again with our super glue or with the epoxy glue you have or context glue, whichever glue you want. Okay, but this works fine. So we'll do that first down here with these. For these two, it doesn't matter too much, but the uh, which side we use, but the ones we put in here, that really matters because they have to stick to that. So, up, put that glue around. Good. And the next one goes in here. Make sure all the sides have blue. Also the bottom. Okay. And we'll glue it up. This obviously will dry very fast, so we can continue with that very, very quickly. What we do here is on one side we put the magnets, and on the other side we actually put dowels. So it's sort of half half. Yeah? So it's half here and half with the magnet. 
we'll do that in one second when these have dried so we can test if the magnets actually work all right so our magnets are for sure dry by now and stuck in there and we'll attach the dowel and the magnets to our frame here to make it really precise it's quite easy i stick in the dowel first and i use the magnets we still have several because there will be more in the box and i put it in there to see if it's in the perfect spot so it should be really flush the end of the magnet okay so i'm going to put in first the dowel just a bit of glue here on the entrance So now it's important, as I said before, to have the right side of the magnet on the magnet here because I can show you, I put them in differently, the different poles. So if I pick it up, one side will, ah, this one is pushing away. If I go close, sort of doesn't attach to it, it moves away because it's a different pole. But the other side of the magnet will stick. And here's the reverse, pushing away and stick. So we have to really make sure that corresponding to that, we put in the right magnets. All right, this means I'll take this magnet off like that. Okay, and one here. And I know that's how they have to be. So from here, I'll pick it up the right way and I'll put it into the right position with the super glue. Where was my cap? Okay, so I put them in there, they're really flush. These will trim a bit later on, but first we let them dry. You can also, uh, after it's dry, put another layer of super glue in sort of the, the little corners we have here, the little spaces. So it really, you know, hardens and really protects it. Afterwards, we might put some varnish on it, so it's really, really strong. So obviously that the magnets don't, you know, pull them out of the sockets. Um, okay, let's let it dry. And that is this part here. Perfect. The next thing we do is we put in the other magnets on the camera. There are two more positions. One is here on the top, on the lid here. That's for accessories that you might have a little metal tray with something on it and that can stick here. Um, and the second position is here. You see there are four holes. One, two, three and four and those are for accessories that we'll, we'll make in the future we sort of design in the future we're thinking of maybe advertisement plates that could be made for frames for photographs but also to write things on so that would be here um, maybe also a drying rack there's sort of different ideas we have around that um, we want to keep the camera sort of adaptable and ready for new extensions that could also be ideas that you have and that we will implement so let's just glue them in with super glue just the way we did before. The next step is we'll attach the lens mount where actually the lens will go in later on to the front hole. So that's this little round piece. So this goes in here. Yeah. It fits very, very tightly. So you have to screw it in slightly and then we'll bang it with the hammer. You can also use a bit of super glue on the inside. So slowly, slowly, just bang it down. Until 
until it's really flush and straight. So right now, yeah, we're really on one and one line here. And that's how you want it to be. Now what I do on the inside, I'll put a bit of super glue between the wood and the lens. So really, really carefully. Okay. And later on, we'll, we'll lacquer this, we varnish this, so it will seal a little bit that gap as well and tighten it so that it stays strongly to the box. All right, the tripod. We put in the pieces here before for the tripod pace. We're going to take them out again and glue it together just like that, okay, with wood glue. Okay, so this is glued together and now we're putting these small aluminum pipes here in the middle and we're gonna attach that with our glue. Oop, doesn't get out. I'm going to tape this as well, especially these parts, yeah, just to make sure they really are tightly together. So let's take the tripod pieces. And at first we take the top parts that look like that, okay? And we're going to attach these elements, okay? So it's very simple. They just go up here. We'll glue them and you'll see there's a little mark and here we'll attach a screw, which is in your screw package. Inside is also this one, don't lose it. That's for later on for the belt. And these screws we use now for here. We take these pieces here, all right, and these small parts that we have here, and the long dowels that are supplied. Okay, and we're going to attach them like that. Okay, and we put dowels in the outside holes, not in the center. That's for a bolt later on, okay? So only the outside ones, that's where the dowels go in, in the middle is a bolt. Okay, so make them flush on one side, so you don't have to saw anything off here, and make sure, yeah, that these pieces are invisible, and we can saw it off here after it's dried. So that's flush here and I'm gonna tape that up. With pieces like this make sure to really, you know, apply some strength so that they really press together. Okay, and as we have here a gap, and that gap tends to pull, you know, this upwards, 
don't put it down like this put it down like that or put something here in between okay so let's put it like that Next are our button parts and for that we use the letter strips that are supplied. They come here at the very bottom to protect it when the tripod stands on the ground. Okay, so you'll see there are these tiny little holes. These are pre-made holes for, for the nails we have supplied. Okay, here you can use the wood glue that bonds with the letter, that roughness of the letter once it's really passed in or use a contact glue if you have, or an epoxy glue, whatever you have available, okay? Okay, this was the tripod and once it's uh, dry and we actually can cut it off it's ready for varnishing or painting if you want to use a paint next step is the negative holder we'll just place a glue here yeah, on the inside put it together tape it up and then exactly how it is here with the dowels i would keep them on the bottom part because that's less visible and uh, you cut them off here equally all right let's do it The holder, I just make sure they're flush on one side and the other side we chop off later on. That's done, now let's do the paper box. Okay, there's lots of small little parts, but as we put it already together, we know where everything goes, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. Now, because this is thin wood, you really want to make sure to attach it very, very well with the tape because it might have, you know, bent a little bit and moved a little bit while transport if it's uh, subjugated to different humidity. So yeah, really make it tight so that there are no gaps because this is later on for our photo paper. So we don't want any light coming in there because otherwise it's destroyed. So yeah, tightness is the key. All right, that was the last part to sort of glue in like that and we're gonna assemble everything in a second. All right, that was the last part. 
to glue in like that and afterwards we're gonna saw off the dowels and then it's time to varnish all right it's time to cut the dowels for that i'm gonna get a piece of wood here to protect my table start with something simple um, as I said, you can use different saws. I recommend something like this. Yeah, that's really, really cheap and it's a handy tool for sawing anything small and sort of fragile. So I'm just going to go here on the edge and cut off all the standing dowels. Now, for these two parts, we're not cutting off the dowels completely, yeah? We're just cutting off a little bit because here the dowels are for those frames to fit in, yeah? So if we cut it off too much, they will fall off. So what I suggest, I'm just gonna take off that paper. So what I suggest is Keep it around, yeah, around here, so that there's almost a centimeter sticking out from the actual dowel. All right. All right, I changed my setting here a little bit to protect the table. I actually recycled our packaging material to yeah, not waste too much. We had a few more dowels to saw down here on the focusing plates. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now before we start to restain a little bit parts of the camera. Next step is to restain some of the camera parts. That is only if you chose the dark stain option. If you have a no stain option, of course, you don't have to stain it. You can do that with a cotton swab yeah, or with a small brush. It really depends on what you want to do. For example, me here, I'm thinking, yeah, there are a couple of small parts that I would like to restain. I could stain these sides also if it bothers me, which it doesn't actually. Um, I could, um, let's say, all the dowels, yeah, we could stain those. I actually quite like the contrast of it, so I'm not going to stain that, but that's something you could do. So let's pick a few pieces that I would like to, just looking around basically, um, yeah, definitely here. This here is a little bit too much for me, I'm gonna restain that. Here, I chipped off a little bit of the wood, I'm gonna restain that, then I'm not gonna see it. Maybe here also, I chipped off a bit. I'm just gonna go through it like that. Um, I have a small, this is like a lid from a little tin. And careful, stain really stains. It stains your fingers, so maybe use gloves. It stains whatever it touches, okay? So just watch out. Okay. 
The wood stain needs a couple of hours to dry. Well, if you applied it really gently like I did, it's gonna be dry probably in like 30 minutes, to be honest. But uh, it's better to be safe. Otherwise, you might smear it with uh, the varnish that I'm gonna put on top. So I'm just gonna make some space and um, well, we can start varnishing. This is a good point where you could just varnish the inside of the box because later on we have the focusing system and it's going to be a bit more difficult to access the pieces. So yeah, it's definitely a good time to do that. Make sure you cleaned out all the dust before and um, yeah, and then just go ahead. What I'm using right now here will be just a clear water-based varnish. Oil-based varnish takes a lot longer to dry. It's a lot longer tacky. Yeah. So I'm going to do probably a layer of this varnish now and then later on when I see, hmm, is it good, is it not good, I'll do a second one. It is good to do a second layer of varnish anyway on the floor and to seal really those pieces on the sides, those gaps, because we are using chemicals there in the end and the chemicals will always spill. I know that from experience. So it's good to have this really, really sealed well and to make sure the wood is not being touched by the chemicals because that sinks in and it will never leave. Okay, so I'm gonna clean that out. I'm gonna place a first part of varnish here, just on the inside, put it on the side. Then I put the inside of varnish, the inside of the lid. And then I start with the tripod pieces because those should be varnished before assembling, of course, otherwise it will still really stick together. Um, if you are planning on painting the camera in your own color, still varnish the inside with a clear varnish or if you want black paint because the darker the insides, the better. The problem is when light comes into the box, which sometimes happens, anything bright will reflect the light versus black will absorb it. So the more we absorb the light, we'll have a safer environment for our photo paper. So that's why I said before, the stained camera option we have is better if you don't want to do too much paint work, yeah? because then you can just keep it as is and we're just going to varnish it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I painted the inside of the box as well as the inside of the lid. What I'm doing here through the dowel holes that we haven't used yet, just could take a cotton swab and place it in so that there's no, you know, depository of varnish because if that dries or it becomes very sticky, it's really hard to get out. So just place that in, you know, and take it a bit out. And that's it. Depending on your varnish, um, it will take between one or two hours to dry to be touched. In this case, this varnish, it says it takes about an hour and six hours for re-varnishing. But that's fine. I'm going to do that in the very end once I assembled everything on the inside. So while this is drying, we can varnish the tripods and basically everything else. With the tripods, it's important that on the inside here, where later on our bolts will slide that's for the position of the tripod yeah. there shouldn't be too much varnish here yeah so otherwise it won't dry a lot and um, it won't otherwise <clears throat> it won't dry very well and um yeah that's something to take care of so not too much varnish 
Um, on the outside, of course, it is also good here on these exposed parts. Put a good amount of varnish or paint if you are painting right now. Um, but be careful on these insides. It's good to cover them, touch them. It can be sort of like really, really gently with very little varnish. You know, put it first on the outside so you, you, you don't have too much. And then we just gently sort of rub the inside until there's a layer on it. And I'm sure of that. Okay. And then the excess, I can just wipe it. Okay. So I'll do the tripod first and then I do the other parts. All right. By now I painted all the pieces for the tripod here on the top. I actually got myself a glove too, as I did stain myself. <laughs> if your varnish starts to be a bit colored, if you use the stained version, that's quite normal because your varnish is taking off a bit of that stain. So yeah, that's just how it is it's for me to say. Okay, I'm going to continue with um, the top piece. Um, yeah, actually pretty much all the pieces. What's important, of course, if I do this here, I'm going to tape the glass part, yeah, just with tape. So I'm not varnishing this part. That's the only thing. The rest I'll varnish just normally. What I'm not varnishing yet are these four pieces. Okay, I'm going to varnish them later on once I attach them to the box. So I'm just going to continue and varnish all the wooden pieces and pretty much everywhere. Okay, so I varnished all the pieces. Everything here is varnished and currently drying. It's already touch dry as it's been quite a while that I let it sit here, but um, should definitely varnish it more. I'll also will sand it a little bit and probably varnish again and sand it again. If you don't sand it, things can stick to each other. And that's definitely a problem later on with the tripod when we put things together. Yeah, they should not be tacky. All right, so what we do now is we take the box. The outside is not varnished yet, only the inside. And we assemble a first part with these pieces here. Yeah, where we have to put the dowels in. So first I'll take these two pieces, the long ones, and I'm going to put it into the side. This one here goes right here. Okay. So I'm just going to place that in and we're going to glue it in in a second. And the same goes for this here. Okay. We will have to saw off a few dowels on the inside. Although in your package, you might have dowels that are exactly the right size, so then you don't have to saw off anything. Again, on this side is the one with the hole. So you line these. Yeah. They will be placed here. This will be placed here. And this one will be placed here. Okay. Now, but when we put that in, we have to attach this as well in the right way. So that means where that hole is, also in that direction where this hole is. Because here we don't have that hole. Okay. That's later on for the focusing rods to put in the third rod. So make sure you align that. Yeah. Put that in here. Put that in here. Yeah. That goes into those two holes. Okay. And then into the two holes here. All right. That's how it's placed. OK, 
Okay. Now we have to, of course, glue it and use the dowels. Now these two are in. Now we have to use these two. They are different again. One has this extra hole here. Yeah. As I said before, we align that on this side because it also has this extra hole. That's where the focusing rod goes to. Okay, so that's placed here. And the other one is placed here. Now we're not going to glue them in. We are going first to attach the dowels and saw them off. Yeah. You probably have in your package dowels that are exactly the right size, You're, so you don't have to do that step. Just gonna slide that in. But here it would be very difficult to put in the dowel and then afterwards sliding in these parts. So I'm gonna put in the dowels, I'm gonna saw them off, take it out again and put that back in. Alright, so I just did the sawing off the dowels. In your package you most likely have dowels that are exactly 20 millimeter. That will be the width of this. So I'm going now to take the focusing system, the focusing frame. Make sure this hole is aligned with this hole and this hole. Alright, and that will go in here. I'm going to put a bit of glue down here. Okay. And we do the same here. Okay. Putting some glue there. And make sure, if you look at this, I saw it off a bit here, I will stain that. This hole is closer to this side. Yeah. So we have that on this part. Yeah. Why? Because we have a bit more space with the focusing on this side for your arm and sleeve to go in. Okay. So when you put that in, make sure the small hole is close to the big hole. Here there's distance. So that's how it goes in here. Okay. Very important. If it's this way, your focusing will be like that and it won't move. All right. Now the trick, you have to put it in first, here and here, make sure they're really inside, then you put them in here, and then you slide it down, okay? Okay, so make sure this is slided in here, it's in here, and then you slide that frame down. Okay, it's it fits perfectly in. Okay, so it's flush here, it's flush here. This is like that. Double check. This hole is really here. Yeah, that hole is here. Here we can see through this hole. Yeah. So this is really one line because that's later on where that goes in. Double check that this is straight. So here's the same distance, which is a bit more than here. Okay. Just double check because this is going to be glued in. Now is the last time to sort of change that. If that's good, perfect. Then we can put in the dowels. Okay. And after that, we can varnish the outside. Okay. 
Okay, that's done. I'm actually going to restain a little bit some of these inside parts, which you already know how to do that because we did that before. And if you don't have the stained version, then you don't need that anyway. And after that, I'm going to varnish the outside of the camera with the lid as well. All right, so before I'm going to stain the camera, I'm going to do one more thing. The focusing rod. There's two elements to it. One is these two parts. Stick it in. Yeah. The second goes here. So we're going to glue them together. Yeah. With a bit of express glue, quick glue, or context glue, whatever you have. We're going to apply that here. And then we're going to attach as well a screw downwards. All right. So that's really screwed in. And then we're going to slide that through here. And with the hole we have here, yeah. Pushed it all the way in. And we're going to attach a screw here as well. Just put it directly in here on the first one, on the first part, so that it's really attached. Okay, last thing we do before I varnish the outside, focusing rod. We're gluing these two pieces together. We're putting express glue or context glue on the inside, stick it in, and then we're attaching one screw here, okay? We have these screws here in our package, okay? These are a little bit larger than all the other screws. And we're just gonna put that in here because it will touch exactly on the metal just to fix it. The same we do here. Slide that in, focus rod goes here, okay, and one screw goes down here so that it really holds that. You can also put a bit of quick glue, express glue, contact glue, whatever you have inside here. Put it in, and to fix it, you screw that screw in here. All right, let's do that quickly. For, for aesthetic reasons, I would put the screw here downwards, yeah, and we turn it around like that. For aesthetic reasons, I would put the screw here on the bottom, and then you slide it in, and the other screw goes on the top. So I'm going to screw it in now. Ciao, ciao. Okay, next step, I will varnish the complete outside of the box. Okay, all the pieces and um, I will also varnish the bottom here. Okay, this cutout, it's cut with laser, 
and sometimes it has a little bit of burn marks so you can at first take a screwdriver and just go a little bit over it Later on, our tripod plate will go in here. And we'll screw it in after we did the varnish. Okay. All right, let's varnish it. All right, everything has dried overnight. I actually varnished most of the pieces twice because that's definitely much, much better to have a good solid varnished layer. There are certain areas that I would varnish even three times. And these are the parts where a lot of water will be on. For example, here, later on, you will put your negative directly on this, sometimes directly from the water bucket, which means the negative is soaked with water. So this area is good to have really, really varnished well. The same goes for the lid of the camera. I would varnish it two or three times. I mean, maybe it starts to rain a little bit. Maybe you put, I you know, a mug on it or something uh, while you work or, or some water spills. So it's good to varnish this a couple of times. And uh, also the inside of the camera. Yes, I would varnish the inside a couple of times just to have this really solid layer for later on when chemicals and, and other things will spill on it. That's evident. Okay, last steps are putting things in place, putting on the hinges, putting on the handles and also putting the tripod together with the bolts. So exciting. Let's start. Let's start with our lid. We have a ladder handle that goes on top. Yeah. And we have two special screws that go in here. All the smaller screws are provided in your separate bags. This was, of course, it's the box, so it was in the box bag. Here they are, these type of screws, okay? We use the one to screw in on the bottom and this one on the top, looks a bit nicer. What you could do is you could put a tiny bit of super glue inside the mechanism, the screwing mechanism, so that the screw really holds if you want that. I'm not gonna do that. I think usually these screws are totally fine, but it is a possibility. Okay, here's the handle, perfect. Next, on the bottom of the box, we have the large area that is for the tripod plate, all right? So we'll put it in this way with those markings uh, facing well downwards, but in our case upwards, and we can place two screws here, okay? You can, of course, also glue it in with your super glue or with any other glue, okay? Maybe we'll do that. I'm going to use today a uh, two component glue. So two components, in this case, you just use two times the same material. Yeah, one is the glue, one is the hardener. And then you have to sort of mix it in very, very well. Once it's mixed in, you can apply it. Some indicate if you have to wait for a certain amount of time. This one doesn't. Um, no. 90 minutes working time, 12 hour hard. All right. So, don't need much. Just a little scoop here. 
and the same amount of this part, more or less. And with my little mixing tool, I'm gonna mix them up. You have to mix them really, really well. That's the whole point, yeah, that the hardener mixes in. And as soon as that's really, really well mixed, Okay, so let's have a look at our top here. Maybe I put a lot of lacquer in it. So sometimes if you put a lot of lacquer in it, it doesn't really go in anymore. Like what I have now. Well, I can bang it in. Uh, because it should be flush. Because we will have this part on top here. Yeah. So it has to be flush. So the contact as well is good. This is only if you like to use a regular tripod and not our included wooden tripod. Okay, I'm gonna take that out again and just put it in there and on the sides. We'll put them in one and two. And, and here you go. That's it. Okay, let's go next to our focusing frame. You take this part, okay, and you take this part. Yeah, they go inside here on top like that. And in the package for the focusing, you had this hinge. Don't uh, confuse it, letter hinge. Don't confuse it with this one, which will be for the box later on. So here we have 10 markings and here we only have six markings. So use the one with 10, all right? That goes here. And we are going to nail that in with the little nails supplied. Yeah. Now, you can use here super glue, wood glue, or again, the 2K epoxy glue, whichever you have, whether the one we supplied, or if you have any other stronger glue, all right? I'm going to show you how to use, I'm going to use the 2K glue again. So, let's mix more up. Stay here. And first I'm going to insert a little handle we have for here, also made from leather, also in your focusing system package. Here we go, this tiny little guy that makes it easier later on, if you have it on top of here, to pull and push it out, okay? So we put a bit of glue here as well and then we nail it onto it. Okay. So make sure it's pointing in the direction of your dowels so that this in the end can go in here and you can pull it out. Okay, so I have it like this and then I use the two nails and I put them on top here. So just again, these are the very small mini nails that are supplied in the package. like that. Now let's continue with this part. Slide it in. Okay. The hinge goes on top here. Up. 
align it in the center. And let's put in the nails. Okay, that's it. Your leather hinge is done. Let it stick for a while. Don't open it. And ready. Okay, next step. Let's do, as I still have a bit of glue here, I'm going to do the paper box now. Ah, I used a little bit too much varnish, I think. If that's the case and you can't really open it anymore, like me, I maybe overdid it a bit. Yeah, I can see in the corners I have some drops here. So that was a little bit of an um, oversight of mine. I can even see it's a tiny bit sticky still. Yeah. Scrape that out, sand it. All right. So in your paper box bag, you have this hinge, which we'll put on top of here with the small screws supplied. They're the smallest in the package, okay? Okay, so that's screwed in. I'm not gonna open it now because I want this to dry properly and really have a good contact. But uh, yeah, that's your finished paper box. On all the surfaces, if you feel it's a little bit rough, sand it down, varnish it again. Yeah, It uh, will, especially in a tripod, which we'll do next, um, make it easier also to move after you've varnished. Yeah? To sand it down a little bit, make it fine. Okay, that's the paper box. Okay, let's put together the box. Place the hinges on it and the closing mechanisms, the back door and as well the corner protection. If you look at the box, you have, if you installed it correctly, markings on the outside here. Here are three markings, three, and on this side there are two and two. Where there's two markings, it goes here where the hole is because we have another two markings here. And on the back we'll have our hinge markings. Okay, let's place it on. In case it goes really, really you know it's difficult to push it down that's maybe because you used too much varnish on the side sanding that's the key to it it should close well and of course if you use it a couple of times you open and close it it will wear down and it will you know come into place but in case it goes really really difficult oh, even mine i thought i uh, i thought it was gentle i thought i was gentle but yeah maybe i'll have to varnish these sides a little bit but yeah maybe i have to sand those sides a little bit for it to open and close easier all right first we do the hinges here on the back you see those markings and we have in your package for the box, you have these larger hinges. Yeah. They will be screwed in here with the screws supplied. One centimeter screws supplied. We'll screw them in here and you have the markings so nothing can go wrong. Okay, those were the back hinges. Now the lid is attached. Let's continue here with the back door, which we have here. Okay. Currently, the box is only resting on these two pieces on the bottom, so I'm going to put some wood here to have a bit more support. All right, let's take the back door. 
And also here you will see different types of markings. Yeah? So there are two and two here. Yeah? That's for the closing mechanism, which will go on this side. And there's two and two here. That's for the hinges. You will see the according markings here. Okay, so if I put that in, you'll see there are four markings and four. That's for the hinges. And here it's like a long strip. That's for the locking mechanism. We're looking at your paper box. Okay, two small hinges. Okay, and then your locking mechanism, just separate it. And we'll place it. This one goes here. And this one goes here. Okay, so in the end, it's all screws falling down. It's like that. Can't go wrong because you have the markings for the screw holes. So just do it according to that. Hinges attached, closing mechanism attached. Ah, I see. I also used a bit of too much varnish. No problem. You can also, these hinges have a bit of a play. Take a hammer. And put that in. Okay, perfect. That's done. Let's continue with the front closing mechanisms. Here we have them. So this is the top part. They go like that. Okay. That's how you put them, okay? They're the holes again, you just screw them in the holes and done. Okay, and those are the locking mechanisms. They close very firmly, which is good when you carry your camera around. Yeah, I see here my varnish is definitely too strong. You might have the same problem as me. Yeah. So I definitely have to sand a little bit here, maybe a little bit here, because that was a little bit too generous, but no problem. Once you sand it and you open it a couple of times, it will work fine. What I do when I use sanding papers on corners, I'll just take a piece of wood and I'll wrap some sanding paper around it. This way I get a nice corner. that is much better so just a slightly bit of sanding and um, maybe I'll sand it afterwards a little bit more I'll see how I use it the more you use it the more these things become you know 
easy to open, easy to close, and that's actually with all the sides. All the doors, also the back door, if you think, oh, it's a little bit too tight, sand it down a bit. I mean, you see how you use it, you see how it works. Now, we're coming to the next part, the protections for all our corners on the box. For that, you have supplied these three-quarter circles. They actually will go like that on the corner and over here like so. Okay, on the corner and over. What I'm going to do now, first I'm going to bend them and I'm going to hammer them down a bit so that they already are in shape. So contact glues often need a sort of airing time, which means you apply the glue first and then you have to air it, this one says, 15 minutes. That sounds a bit long to me, but um, I guess they know better. So we'll use that glue very, very easily. Usually contact glue is like a gooey kind of a, yeah, gel. And I'm just gonna apply it here yeah, on let's say, the four for the top, and then I'll do the bottom. So, glue material. Uh, my paper is maybe a bit too thin for that. I'm gonna take this little mini spatula and apply contact glue. Not too generously. Start a little bit enthusiastic here. Usually contact glue is uh, a applied on both areas where you glue. So you don't want to do it too much because you don't want the glue to be visible afterwards. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the corner here and here, just a tiny bit. What I'm making sure though is that all the edges have glue, yeah? Because those are the ones that we don't want to come off. So all the edges have glue, okay, that's one. Let's start with the first one. Put it exactly on the corner. Yeah, it's already dried, so it really has a good tack, like it's really sticky, okay? And bend it down nicely. Okay, so we really have a nice contact here. Rub it, you can even tap it. Okay, I'm gonna put all of them first on and then I'm gonna nail them actually. And we have our mini nails and I'll just put that on. Okay, that's the top, let's go to the bottom. Okay, we've done that. Next step is to put in the focusing plate. So our focusing plate with the opening mechanism, this is still drying, so I don't wanna open it fully, but just to test it a little bit. Yeah. Pull it here and that's how you open it. And with the magnets that we installed, it will close nicely. Ah, oh, it's a great sound. All right, so you have four holes here and these holes correspond 
to two holes on the inside. Here and here. And depending if you shoot portrait or landscape, you put the frame in like that or like this. Now the frame will hold in tightly. So even like that it holds. But these holes here are for the two bolts with those nuts that you have in your package and you can just attach them to secure them. Okay, so our focus system is set in place and actually ready to use. All you would need is the lens in the front, but let's put it in the end. Here we have our sleeve. This is a light safe or light tight fabric. So when you put in your hand into the box, no light comes in. What we have here is a rubber band that's also supplied in here that goes on the inside of the box. So you attach the sleeve on the inside of that round frame that we attached previously. So looking at the box from the inside, this is where we are attaching the sleeve all around in the circle. With the wider end, put that in. Wrap it around. The nicer you wrap it, the less folds and creases you have in, and that's always better. And then all you do is take that rubber band and wrap it around. It's pretty tight, but it's snug afterwards and really holds it in place. You can pull out the excess material All right, we've got that. It's in place. And the great thing is like that, you can always take it out, wash it, clean it, or replace it with your own sleeve if you have like a special fabric they would like to put in. The next step is to make a protection for the lid, because right now it's always bending over. And if you put weight on this here, that's a little bit dangerous. So, so. That's the last leather piece we're putting on. Actually not true, we have a belt for the tripod. And uh, we put that anywhere you like, here. Now that's the only place where it's up to you if you want it to be open only like this or you prefer it a bit further, that's up to you. That is depending on where you attach these pieces here, okay? So whether you do it like that or a bit further down, that is entirely up to you. Now first I'm going to attach these two holes in the center on the wood here. All right, so that's solid. And now I'm going to decide on how wide I want it to be opened, I think. Roughly around that. Yeah, that's good to me. So I'll start with the bottom one. Last thing on the box is the negative holder. Those two pieces. If you're having trouble pushing it in, 
and sliding it back out that's because you might have some varnish or paint residue on the inside here you can scrape that out with a screwdriver or scratch it out and or sand down these edges here a little bit so that it moves smoothly let's see how this does here uh, i should sand it down a bit too so to stabilize this we have here a bolt and a nut that's to stabilize your position because later on that you can find out in the how to use a camera video this is for the position of your negative in accordance with your lens all right and this goes into the front right here and you can secure that also with a provided bolt that goes down here you just have to align it better than i did and you can secure that and the bottom you can either use a nut or you just let the bolt slide in voila just like that that's actually already secured first time i still have a little bit of lacquer varnish in there i can feel Voilà. just push the varnish through and now i can easily slide it in and out yeah it works good so that's your camera with your focusing plate in the front this is your camera with the negative plate in the front the focusing this is your camera finished all we have to do now is install the tripod so we have our tripod base and we have our leg elements of each of these we have three now for our three legs this is the top that will be attached here this slides in here and this goes in here so what we have to do first is attach this piece with the pin we have in here so all we do is and we do that now before we do everything else i'll put a bit of super glue on the very inside yeah and i put a bit of super glue here and i'm going to slide it carefully through yeah you could use a wipe a wet wipe and wipe the super glue off right away here yeah or use a solvent um, turpentine or something and wipe it off you can also sand it off later which is what i might just slide it in like that and then go like this okay so i'm just going to slide it in i'm going to the side voila and that's that okay now the way this has to be attached is if you look at the bottom part here you have a longer part and a shorter part where the leather piece is the longer part is what goes onto the floor like so okay and this goes in here okay and that's it that's your tripod leg now we attach the nuts and bolts that we have supplied in our parcel all right So what is in this package? We have three times three, uh, the thickest and longest go on the top, the long thin ones in the middle and those ones on the bottom. Okay, so thick and long here, long here, short here. And then there's an individual one which later on for connecting the 
box to the tripod. Let's take that up. Take the very long and thick one. Maybe in the beginning it's hard to push through because maybe you have some varnish in those aluminum uh, pipes that we installed here. Yeah, I can see a bit of varnish came out. Okay, you put that on top and you screw it on. Now the first time you do that, you will actually drive the bolt into the wood. That means Okay, that works. This part right here, yeah, that's sticking out right now, will screw that in and the part will slowly go into the wood. So you attach it strongly. You can even hear it going. Okay, and you can see it's now in. And that way we'll have real good stability later on. Okay, perfect. All right. I'm going to unscrew it a little bit because I don't need it that tight right now, so I can move this. Okay, next one. I'll keep them in the same direction, just for aesthetic reasons. The next one goes through this part here, remember? In this part, you had the two dowels and in the middle is a hole. You can see it when you look through and that's where I'll push that through. Also a bit of varnish in there, might have to knock it in. Quite a lot of varnish. Okay, and the third one, that's the smallest screw. Goes in here. Same here, I'm gonna push in hard. For the first time I can hear the wood doing its work, but then we'll have good contact. All right, I'm gonna unscrew it again so it can move. Okay. Okay, so now in the beginning, if you only just varnish this or painted this, the paint is still a bit tacky. So if you attach it and you screw this really tightly and you after two or three days want to move it, you will be like, oh, oh, it doesn't move, it doesn't move. And you will need to, of sorts, loosen or almost break the bond because it's just got attached a bit. So I recommend you let it really dry for a few days. And then if it happens that they attach to each other, you just slightly wiggle it. Unscrew, wiggle, and the pieces will separate. Okay. And here it is, our finished tripod. That's the smallest version, and of course you can extend the legs to make it larger. It is finished, but we have an extra thing. Developed this belt that provides a sort of extra stability for the tripod, because especially if you're set up in public, people are around, they might knock it over, or your foot gets stuck in the tripod, and it's possible that the legs sort of get pulled out. And with this leather belt, you prevent that from happening. 
So we have six screws with a bit of a larger head. And with that head, you can, through these holes, mark the position of your tripod or stabilize it. So what we do, we find a spot here. I usually do it around 10 centimeters above this, this plate. And we'll add two screws in, in the middle, exactly in the middle, because that will correspond to those beginning holes. Yeah, that's exactly in the middle of the outside. So we do that on all of the legs. And afterwards we wrap it around and the tripod and so the camera is completely finished. Because my legs are not so far out, I obviously have a bit of excess here, which I'll just place on top as well. All right, so that creates real strong stability. The last step, let's put the camera on top and we're done. We have for that a bolt. And remember, we have on the top here, these two pieces that will slide in the holes we have underneath. The way the tripod is designed is that the single leg that goes in straight line with the dowels is to the front. So that's the front. I'll take the box, lift it up. In the center of the box, you have a hole. So just slide in your bolt. And on the bottom, you can put in the nuts. I'm pushing it really tight because also in the dowels I have a little bit of varnish and this way it really creates a good contact. Perfect. The last thing you do, the very, very last thing, the grand moment, let's attach the lens. you're ready to take photographs officially. Congratulations, you did it. You constructed your instant box camera. Maybe it wasn't the easiest, maybe you weren't used to it, but uh, I'm sure you made it work well. If not, most of the things are repairable. If you had some problems, get in touch with us. We can always solve your issues. Um, yeah, check out the other videos that we have on our YouTube channel or on our website with different techniques, with techniques like montaging, hand coloring, um, trick photography, color photography, and of course, how to use the box in a regular form and also with direct positive paper. I hope you enjoyed this construction and um, good luck and happy shooting.